Thank you very much and hello everybody and welcome and I'm delighted to be here for a third year in a row talking to you about becoming a vet and what a career as a veterinary surgeon entails. So let me just share my... Brilliant. So today is all going to be about if you're considering a career in veterinary medicine that you absolutely can make it and it is an incredibly diverse and rewarding career. So a little bit of an introduction, who am I? My name is Daniela Dos Santos and I'm the current Senior Vice President of the British Veterinary Association, which for those of you who are not sure of what we do, um, we are the largest membership body for the veterinary profession in the UK with over 18,000 members. And for those of you who are perhaps a bit more familiar with the other medical professions, we are the equivalent of say the BMA or the BDA. Now, I graduated from the Royal Veterinary College in 2012, and I had previously got a degree from King's College in London in molecular genetics. And since I've qualified, I've been working primarily in small animal and exotic pet practice. A bit of my background, um, I knew I wanted to be a vet since I was about as old as that little girl you can see on the screen there, that's me, I was about four or five. Um, and I grew up in Lambeth in a very diverse, but a very poor community. There was no history of anybody even taking A-levels, let alone going to university in my family. Um, also from a single parent family and my parents were also immigrants. So as you can see, I'm perhaps not what you would normally associate with being a vet. But as I hope you'll discover by the end of this presentation, you don't need to be from a certain background or look a certain way to be a vet. So why? Why do we people become vets? And there's a whole heap of reasons why. And when we, the British Retinue Association asked this question, the couple of responses that we got are up on the screen. For some like me, they've always known, and it is the perfect career to combine a passion for science, an interest in nature and animals, and a love of people, because our job involves all three. For others, it's the variety, and as I'll touch on in the next few slides, becoming a vet is not just about clinical practice or cats and dogs, it is an incredible degree that opens so many doors. For others, as you can see, there was a choice between medicine and being a vet. And whilst they felt they had more affinity for animals and that's why they became a vet, being a vet has a huge part to play in society within your community and making those connections and relationships with people that you serve as well. And of course, being a vet in certain sectors also comes with a lifestyle choice. When you think about being a farm vet or an equine vet, you spend a lot of your time out on the road and in the fresh air. So I suspect for many of you watching, you have a perceived idea of what, what vets do, and it probably involves cats and dogs in, in, as the first thing that comes to your mind. But what you can see on the screen now is only a tiny number of the huge variety of roles the vets play in the profession in the world. We can be in education, we can be in clinical practice, we can be in epidemiology, we can do, be in business. Your veterinary degree would open up a huge, huge number of doors. So in the next couple of slides, I am just going to touch on a few of the career options available to you with a veterinary degree. So of course, clinical practice. If I was sitting in a room with all of you today and asked, what do you think a vet does? Most of you would probably say clinical practice, so cats and dogs and so on. But there are some differences in the different sectors of clinical practice. So as you can see here on the left, um, in small animal practice, you are looking after primarily cats and dogs not just looking after their medical or surgical needs, for example, but also looking at preventative healthcare and helping owners make sure that they give their pets the best and happiest life they can. You work alongside some very skilled allied professionals such as registered veterinary nurses, physiotherapists and things like that. It's very much about the individual animal. However, if you were to become a farm vet, and you can see a picture here on the right of me and my best friend when we were learning how to rectal cows at vet school, when it comes to farm animal medicine, it's far more about herd health and population health. So yes, you will have individual animal health issues such as cesarean sections and things like that. But a lot of it is about looking at the population as a whole and making sure that that herd or flock is as healthy as can be and protecting the food supply chain as well. So herd health plans involve things such as vaccination protocols, biosecurity protocols and things like that. Now at the bottom, you can see um, equine practice. Now, equine practice is what I would call a mix of the two. Um, in some cases, you will be dealing with individual animals, and in some cases, you will be looking at the bigger picture. And certainly in equine practice, you could be working from anything from hobby horses and backyard ponies 
all the way through to elite athletes involved in racing and dressage, for example. But there are other areas of clinical practice as well. That's me in the middle. Um, as I said earlier, I work in exotic pet practice primarily. And that was one of my favorite ever um, patients called Billy. Now, in exotic pet practice, you do, of course, do the medicine and the surgery as you would do in small animal practice. But the vast majority of my work is about education. It's about educating members of the public and owners on the welfare needs of each individual species that they look after and making sure they have a happy and healthy life. If you like exotic animals, but you're thinking on a larger scale, then absolutely being a zoo vet is another option. Being a zoo vet, however, is more like being a farm vet. It is about herd health and big flock or herd management. But there's also a huge amount to do with conservation work in there as well. And of course, you could go into more specialised practice, such as fish practice, for example, where you're looking after the health of farm fish and thinking about the food chain. Or you could even go into things like poultry or pig practice as well. But for those of you sitting there going, well, yeah, I like science, but I'm not that keen on animals. Actually, there's a whole heap of other things that your veterinary degree could open up to you. There is non-clinical practice as well. So I'm going to just quickly touch on a couple of the things that you could be doing. You could be working in research, for example. Um, you could be at the moment with the COVID outbreak. There are actually vets working on the development of the vaccines, for example. You could work in the pharmaceutical industry, looking at the research and development of drugs, the testing, but then also providing technical advice for those vets on the ground. And there are some other really interesting career paths. So on the right here, you have Neil. Now, Neil was a vet in the army, which, of course, means he's worked um, on cats and dogs and horses. But actually, he was involved in the um, Ebola outbreak in Sierra Leone a few years back and he went out as part of the UK team to help build a field hospital. In the middle there you have Gladys. Gladys is a true One Health champion. She works not only with the gorillas in Bawindi but actually she works closely alongside the human population as well, taking a One Health approach and realising that in order for animals to survive and be healthy, humans, animals and the environment have to work in synergy. And the most incredible story at the bottom there is Richard Lynham. Now, Richard Lynham is a vet, but he's also an astronaut with NASA. Now, he's a marine mammal vet, and he has even given lectures from the European Space Agency down to his students on Earth. He was hired as an uh, astronaut because of his life sciences skills, because of his veterinary degree. So if you're sitting there and thinking, oh, but I don't want to get pigeonholed, I don't want to go into a veterinary degree and only be able to do um, clinical practice, please don't worry, it opens a huge, huge number of doors for you. And what does a vet look like? This is another thing. Sometimes you might look up and feel like there is no one that looks like you. And there is that very well-known saying that you can't be what you can't see. But every single individual on this screen you see now is a vet. Some of them are speaking to you later in other streams as well. Some of them have disabilities. And some of them are well known for other things outside of veterinary professions, such as Laura Muir, a world, um, a world breaking middle distance runner. So please, if you're sitting there and thinking this sounds really, really interesting, I'd really like to look into this. Go for it. I can tell you it's the best career in the world. So let's talk about the technicalities. If you do think you want to pursue a career as a vet, what do you need to do? So at the moment, as you can see, there are nine schools in the UK that provide a veterinary course. And they will range from four to six year courses, depending on where you go and dependent on whether or not you are using an access course to enter the veterinary profession, whether you are studying at Cambridge, for example, that has a standard six year course or whether you're going in as a graduate where there are some accelerated courses available to you. All of the courses are slightly different whilst the outcome is the same. And it's worth having a look around and seeing which one of them has a curriculum that perhaps suits your learning style better. Now, there are some general requirements and they do vary between universities. Generally speaking, you're looking at A-level requirements from an AAB to A star AA at A-level, and most of them will require chemistry and biology. But do check as they do vary slightly. And you will need some form of work experience as well. But just to make you aware, of course, COVID has changed everything. And there is now an incredible online version of work experience that is being accepted by the university. So do keep a lookout for that. It's on the Future Learn platform and it is completely free. But please don't panic. If you're looking at this going, I would love to be a vet, but I just can't get those A's. Don't worry, there are other ways in. 
there are a, quite a few widening participation programs out there available to you and I've just highlighted a couple of them on the screen. Perhaps the most well known is the Royal Veterinary College's Gateway Program, where the entry requirements are three C's and no work experience is required. They use contextual data. They find out more about you and your background and have a look to see if you have the passion and the drive to become a vet, rather than necessarily just the academic requirements. So please, I would encourage you all that are listening, that are thinking, I would love to consider a career as a vet, to go and have a little bit more of a read. There is more information on the dedicated My Vet Future website, which is a career hub available for everyone from ch school children all the way through to retired vets. So for more information, do have a look on there or have a look on the Vet Schools Council web website that will tell you all about entry requirements, including widening participation programmes. So thank you all for listening. I do hope that that was um, interesting. Later today, we do know that on some of the other stages, we have some of my colleagues joining you talking about what it's like to be a vet in education, a farm vet, an equine vet, a zoo vet, and also a registered veterinary nurse. So please do hang about, do go and have a chat with them. They would love to speak to you about the specifics of the career they have chosen. And thank you very much for listening. <laughs>